Welcome to In Business. I'm your host, David Voychik. Thanks for being with us on this Monday, March 11th. We have loads of guests, so let's get to them. On the show tonight, we find out how Joanna Liu got started teaching children about journalism. We discuss how to lose your spouse and still keep your business. Author Chala Dinkoy is in the house to talk about gentle marketing, and Matt Schnarr from Awake Chocolate is back to tell us about his Dragon's Den experience. If you'd like to join the conversation and ask a question, you can call us at 905-848-5483. That's 905-848-LIVE. Or you can tweet your question to me, at David Wojcik, or use the hashtag RTV in business. First up, have you got a great idea for a new app but don't know where to get help to commercialize it? Enter the App Lab and Kundin Joshi. The App Lab will help you with your strategy, design, and development on your new app. Welcome, Kundin. Thanks for uh, coming in. Thank you for having me, David. Uh, so tell us just in about 30 seconds exactly what you do for people that have apps because you design it, you develop a strategy, and you actually build the apps as That's well. That's correct. That's correct. So Maybe I said it for you all. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty much, it pretty much goes like that. Uh, obviously, it depends on who the client is. Uh, we, we start with the strategy. We, the idea mostly comes from the client. Uh, we start with the idea. We figure out what's the best way to, to put it to market, what's the best way to create it. Uh, then taking all the ideas, we create a roadmap for the mobile app, uh, design it, uh, our designers do that, and then we develop it. After development, the job is just half done because then you need to publish it and make sure the app works, creates revenue, uh, really achieves the goal. So pretty much end-to-end, we help our clients from ideation to, uh, to making that successful. Now, do you ever have people come in and they give you an idea for an app and you just look at it and you go, well, <laughs> this is never going to fly, and is it your responsibility to tell a client that it, this is really a, a dog of an idea? In a way, yes, but I don't say it in those words. I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're probably much more polite and politically correct than I am. <laughs> I, I try to, I mean, I try to make them realize what they're really looking for. I mean, what is their, I mean, the main key is what is the audience really looking for? What problem of, the, of your, of your uh, user or your customer are you trying to solve? Uh, so if I mean, and that's why I ask the right qualifying questions. If it's if it's off the mark, they'll have a realization themselves. And you know, a lot of times, ideas can be tweaked and improved as we go along. We also help clients create prototyping. Uh, and when what prototyping does is we'll we'll create a a, a, a semi polished version of the app, which you can then publish and get user feedback and understand better. Is that app really what they what they were expecting it to behave like? So it's like a and beta version that you're exactly, right there? exactly, or even alpha version, like really, really basic. Really new. Really. And what makes a good app these days? Because we were just before we came on camera, we were talking about there's got to mm -hmm. be over a million apps. Conservatively speaking, there has to be over Certainly. a million apps between Android and iPhones, Certainly. And Blackberries, and web. Not and let's not forget the web oh, apps. Yeah. <laughs> what makes a good app these days? Uh, good app. Again, just reiterating, I mean, it depends on what your consumers are looking for, what your business stands for, and uh, how can you give them the best experience, create the best amount of revenues, and really be there, uh, be there solving their problem. Uh, so, I mean, a good app, uh, if, if it's not a brand that's doing the app, if it's a technology startup that's trying to create the app to generate revenue, that is, it has to really solve a unique problem. Obviously, considering a million apps, a lot of problems are getting solved as we go every single day. And uh, so, I mean, obviously, it's about distingu like distinguishing yourself as well. So, uh, so, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, all those factors have to be considered. You have to have a really good strategy to start with. Don't just go into it without thinking it through. I mean, obviously, there's, there is a sense of urgency because there are a million apps, a billion to come in the next uh, few years. So, there is a sense of urgency, but you have to... So you have to approach it the right way, create the strategy. So when you're building uh, uh, web apps, because mm -hmm. you do both, you build web apps right. and you build apps for mobile devices That's as well, right. are, are, they, are they similar? Would you build the same kind? Would it be the same architecture for a web-designed app as it, as it would be for a mobile app? And if it, if, if it isn't, what's the difference? Uh, a lot of differences. Uh, one aspect, I mean, uh, within mobile sphere itself, I mean, uh, a, a basic approach would be Create a website and make it responsive. What a, web, what a responsive website means is your website will look certain way on your desktop. When you pull it up on your mobile, it will shrink so that the fonts are the same size, everything, the experience is the same way, but you can still view it on your mobile phone. 
or you create a mobile site specifically for your phone, or you create a native app specifically for a platform which can uh, work offline or online. It's almost like downloading a software on your computer. Similarly, you download a mobile app on your phone. Uh, even with 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 uh, your phone apps, you have native version and hybrid version, uh, which are which are different. Because if if you want to publish it on multiple platforms, then you choose a hybrid version where you can publish it on the iPhone and the Android and Windows, BlackBerry, so, so on and so forth. So when you have a hybrid version, does that mean it doesn't work well on any any app <laughs> on any device? <laughs> the experience is slightly. I mean, again, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to build a game. Uh, you need a native app because you you need experience par like par excellence. Uh, whereas uh, when it, if if your app is all about pulling content from the web, then hybrid would be just fine. So it again it depends on the kind of experience you're 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 trying to give uh, to your audience. Uh, in some cases, uh, you may not need an app at all. You, just the web or the mobile app, uh, mobile site is good enough. Uh, but in other instances, obviously you have to make sure that. And there are there are a lot of advantages from between web and uh, or a mobile site versus uh, a native app. I mean, ability to provide push messaging, ability to view content offline, whether or not your, your 3G is working. Uh, there are tons of different aspects, and the experience of it is superior experience. There are tons of advantages. I've seen some of the apps that come out, and uh, some are free. Mm -hmm. uh, then you get them for free, and they have a limited number of features that you could use, which right. causes you to now need to upgrade. Right. And it could be 99 cents. It could be a buck 99. I mean, but seeing them as high as, you know, $19 and things like that. Right. Uh, is, is that a strategy that you recommend is to give, give the people just give them a little taste <laughs> and, <laughs> and then once you've got them hooked in, right. then start charging? Definitely. That's, that is the most successful strategy that's working right now. I mean, just in-app purchases by itself in 2011, so two years be, behind, was, uh, was more, than a, more, more than a billion dollars. It, approaching next year, we'll be reaching $6 billion of revenue just in in-app purchases. I mean, the advantage of an app is obviously you lure them, give them the carrot, uh, they, they start liking it. I mean, Angry Birds is a perfect example, right? You download the free version, <laughs> you, you get addicted to it, and then, I mean, you don't have a choice. You're just lured into <laughs> buying the new features, the... The, I mean, the premium apps and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it is, it is a fantastic and all the little choice to go along with it. Exactly. Uh, with, um, without going into exactly what you charge for an app, uh, and maybe it's not even your numbers, but give us a ballpark. And I know that an app on the upper end can go as, you know, sky's the limit. Sky's the whatever limit. Whatever you want to charge. Yes. But if we're looking for a, um, you know, a functional app that, that you would consider to be a decent one, mm. what's the starting number that we're that we that we're at dollar wise? Uh, I mean, one one of the things that that we do as App Lab is try try and simplify the process for for any kind of consumer. So as you said, the in terms of higher uppers, like I mean, the limit just is kind of. Uh, in terms of smaller apps, obviously, if I'm develop if you're developing from scratch, uh, a basic app, I mean. Around five to ten thousand will be minimum. Yeah. However, I mean, uh, companies like us, we've developed uh, like like platforms which can help you release your app in, at a very minimal cost. So, I mean, our cheaper version of apps cost as low as two thousand or even lower in some cases. So, so it's possible to make your mobile dreams come true in for cheap. So, when when we're at that range, I mean, if we're in the five to ten thousand range, and the number I had heard was fifteen thousand as well. Uh, that's that's a lot of 99 steps that you have to sell in order to Indeed. make a profit. Is is the goal of the app always to make a profit, or are there other goals that you would put in, or other strategies you would put in for building an app? There are several goals. I mean, uh, the revenue model obviously has to be very well defined for an app. Uh, one revenue model is obviously, yeah, I mean, you download individual apps and you you charge for every single app that you uh, that you download. Uh, the other approach is obviously ad supported. I mean, you have ads running on your app whether it's ads directly from platforms or your own sponsored ads. Uh, but for that, you need a lot of lot of volume in terms of downloads and whatnot. Uh, there are other approaches in terms of you tie in another revenue model of yours. So say you have a website where you're selling subscriptions. Now you have a mobile app. Uh, so you're sort of adding another advantage or you're an e-commerce website. Now you want to sell your, uh, your stuff on your mobile phone as well. Okay. That's another way. Uh, in, in, in terms of companies, brand awareness is a huge tool as a part of marketing for events, ticketing, uh, event awareness. So all those things tie in, uh, mainly because phone is where every user or every uh, consumer of yours has. So you have to target exactly. that. Great. Thanks, Finn. Thanks. Lots of great information. 
Uh, do you have a budding little journalist or television anchor at your house? There's a new program in Gill to stimulate their creativity. Stay with us. We'll be back with Joanna Liu, a voice K, and more in business right after the break.